you know, I get asked all the time, oh, wait, you can ferment vegan cheese, you can age vegan cheese. And yes. I all the, all I say is yes. And I don't know anything else past that. So help, help well, us out for when people ask so, those questions. As it turns out, you can pretty much ferment anything um, or age anything. So there are so many different plant substrates that we just haven't even explored yet because no one ever thought of doing that before. Um, so this is a whole new world. I just got back from, from New York just to share a story. And there's this amazing cheese shop that opened up about four years ago called Riverdale. And they had the most beautiful display of gorgeous, gorgeous cheeses. So there are so and many. And when you say cheese, are we uh, assuming it's well, all vegan cheese? That That's all I ever talk about. Okay, so okay. Just like our audience. Is, is, okay. Is, yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, I refuse to use the word cheese alternative or uh -huh. Good, uh, because good. it's not an alternative. It's going to become mainstream. So you'll say dairy so, cheese if you're talking about dairy uh, if cheese. I'm talking about if I'm talking about the alternative, I'll say dairy cheese. Love it. Otherwise, love it. Love it. All right. Yeah. We're on board. OK. So anyway, they have there's all these little artisan cheese makers all over the world now. And I visited them in Rome and the UK and Budapest. And in New York, there's so many there's these little clusters of these little cheese makers that are making these gorgeous, gorgeous cheese artisan cheeses they've just taken it to a whole new level and i'm we i bought brought back a whole bunch of them we tasted it here with our r d team we were so impressed at the level of um, the, the, the the just the quality that you know it's just come so far since i first wrote my cookbook and since we launched five years ago so but basically to make cheese to make dairy cheese what you do is you introduce a lactic acid culture bacteria into uh, milk, which has protein in it. And um, it, and you also introduce an enzyme that works on the protein. So the enzyme works to congeal the protein and that's where you get curds and whey as they, as they say, you know, little Miss Muffet sat on her tuppet eating her curds and whey. The lactic acid bacteria work to lower the pH and acidify the milk. So it, it starts out being very sweet like milk is because it's high in sugar. The lactic acid bacteria eat the sugar and lower the pH so that it turns into something that's like cheese. The curds are separated from the whey and then they're pressed. And then, you know, any number of things can happen to it. They can age it, they could brine it, they could inoculate it with a mold like Penicillium roqueforti or Penicillium candidum. All kinds of things can happen. So you can apply the same processes to certain plant substrates. They all act differently. Uh, for example, cashews are a very neutral nut. They're not high enough in protein. They're much higher in starch, so they don't coagulate uh, like milk does, but you can thicken it through other means, such as pressing or air drying or aging, et cetera. Almonds are higher in protein, so are macadamia nuts and uh, sunflower seeds. They might actually coagulate depending on the enzyme that you use. So there are similarities, and then there are differences, and every single substrate is different, so you have to figure out how do you tweak that? And what we've done here that I'm very proud of at Miyoko's is that we've commercialized this technology. Um, you know, it was one thing if you're making it in a in your in your little laboratory or your kitchen at home or even in a small production facility, but to be able to go from making you know 40 pounds a day to making 20,000 pounds a day is a huge undertaking. And it requires uh, capital expenditures, huge pieces of equipment, figuring out how do you co construct these lines? How do you maintain the integrity of the product? When we first moved to this, built this 30,000 square foot facility and started producing, all of our cheeses were coming out like soup. They just never set up. And we didn't know what was going on. And you know, it took a team of food scientists and, and engineers and me to figure out what the issue was with the equipment that was causing uh, a failure in the product. Um, and so it, as the cheese revolution takes place and we go from dairy products to plant-based substrates, there's gonna be new books that are gonna have to be written on the food science of ferment fermenting plants, aging plants, and all of that. So we're in an all, you know, this is a, a brave new world that we are entering that I feel very proud that Miyoko's is spearheading, that we're at the, at the head there and, and blazing this new trail. And then there are all these amazing individual cheesemakers that are also out there discovering the science. And the trick is going to be scaling that science and making it commercial. 
So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.